Hey guys, I know the lighting down here in the basement is horrible. Um, there's really not much I can do about it. Sorry about that. I was reading some of the comments from my last video when I was actually talking about the 6-volt golf cart batteries, going and purchasing them. Um, and I was just reading them today and I said, you know something, I'm going to start filming part 2 of that. I thought I would answer some of those questions and some of the concerns. Now, the, one of the questions I got, it well, one of the comments that keep repeating itself is it's a lot of information to process, and it is. It really is, um, but it's simple once you start to grasp voltages and where, how to take care of your batteries, it becomes very easy to understand. At first, it seems like a lot, but it really isn't that difficult. If you just uh, read up on it a little bit, ask some questions, you know, a lot of the a lot of the information from these videos are actually contained down below in the comments where questions are being asked and answered. That's where you'll get a lot of your, your information from that you can research off of from there. Um, I always recommend that everybody kind of does their own research on what they're doing and be responsible for what they're doing. Um, just because somebody down below in the comments says, you know, connect this and this, doesn't, make, doesn't mean it's actually the right way to do it. Um, and you have to be, ultimately, you have to be comfortable on, on what you're doing um, and what your technical level is. Uh, what I'm doing here is fairly simple to me. It might not be to everybody, and I apologize, but if anybody's considering installing their own batteries or upgrading their battery banks, they are, they've most likely already done some research. Um, I'm one of those people that I don't, I don't call anybody to do anything, at least I try not to. I try to take care of everything myself. And I'm willing to help you guys out in any way that I can, you know, through comments, videos, uh, drop me a private message, and I'll try to explain it the best I can. Unfortunately, through typing and text, it's not easy to, to fully explain some things, you know. Um, but what I'm doing today is, I have the two new batteries here, we're going to be making a cable to link the two together. We're going to talk a little bit about fusing and what type of fuses and size fuses I'm using and why. The next part of this series of videos is actually going to be the install onto the camper and why I did things the way I did out there. So this one particular video here is just going to be linking them together using some shrink tubing, adding the connectors, fuses, putting the boxes together and getting them ready to go out onto the the camper itself. All right, guys. Well, come along. I'll do my best to explain things again. I, I can't stress it enough. Ask questions down below, and I'll do my best. And I'm sure my other viewers as well will help you out. And and we can you know we can kind of learn together as we go. And then by asking a good question, that actually helps somebody else that might be later on down the road watching that video has that same question in their mind, they might read down and see your questions and all the answers that came after that. So, let's get going here and get these batteries set up and ready to go. Okay, so, what I'm using to link these together is a four gauge fine stranded cable. Now the four gauge is good for well over a hundred amps, um, but I will only be fusing it to 100 amps. I have these little holders with the uh, 100 amp blade fuse. Whenever fusing your batteries, now I know this is going to get a little more technical than probably I wanted to get into, but whenever fusing your batteries, you should always fuse your batteries and fuse your devices to what they can handle. I want to fuse for what my wiring can handle. If I change wiring down line somewhere, I should put another fuse in that can handle, that can protect the wiring going forward for that new size wire. So right now, connecting the two batteries together, because I'm connecting a positive to a negative, I'm not going to fuse this because there's really no reason to. Some people will argue that, um, but I'm in the, uh, the camp of not needing to. So we're going to tin the ends with some solder. We're going to add on some copper ring terminals, and then we're going to shrink tube over them. This cable is green and white because I put a shrink tubing over it. Um, all I did was put it on. I haven't heated it up yet because I didn't want this green cable to be confused with a ground cable. So 
I put the white over it when I put the ring terminals on. I will then put another shrink tubing over the rest of the green and this cable will actually be completely white. And what that will do is it will just make it so that people don't think going forward, even after I sell the camper, that it's a ground cable and, and try to do something with it. Um, you know, whenever you're doing something, you have to think about future owners as well. I know some people don't give a crap, but I do. Whenever working with a torch or fire, it's always a good idea to have uh, a fire extinguisher handy, which I do. I actually have two of them down here. Adding a little bit of flux, we'll heat it up. I don't need a lot, I'm just going to do the end of it, the tip, just so I can still get the uh, connector on there. Now we're going to prep the other end. Now we'll uh, put some flux on and tin that end. Like I said, we're just making a jumper cable to turn the two batteries from 6 volts into a 1 12 volt battery. So we're going to run them in series, which will double the voltage, but keep the amperage the same. So they're 215 amp hour 6 volt batteries, they will still be... 215 amp hours, but they'll be 12. They'll be 12 volts total. We'll let that cool. Now we're just going to shrink up the rest of the shrink tubing. Now I normally use a heat gun, which I have over there, but I have the torch going, so we'll just hit it with a little heat from the torch. Now, not only this change the color, so that we don't get confused. Um, it'll also add a, another element of protection for the cable. Okay. Now that's what the ends are going to look like. I'm going to crimp them. And then I'm going to slide this shrink tubing up over where I soldered and crimped and then shrink that shrink tubing down in. So let me get these crimped and I'll be right back. Alright, now we'll just uh, put that shrink tubing over the end of that after we solder it. Now we'll do the same thing to this end. We'll put on our shrink tubing for the ends and slide that down. You want to slide that away from the heat so when you do the actual soldering on this on this side uh, you don't heat it up to where it it shrinks on you. Jam it on. You, you want it all the way in without any copper showing. Woo! Hot! Alright, that should do that. Now we'll let that cool and then we'll be able to slide our shrink tubing up over and then we will have a completed cable. Here is the end that has been tinned, soldered and crimped. Now we're going to take that piece of shrink tubing that I moved down further in and slide it up over the connector. See that? Covering the green and covering my soldered connection. That'll help keep moisture, corrosion out of there and then we'll just Shrink it on. Like I said before, I know this video or this series of videos is not going to be for everybody. Um, but for those that get something out of it, it's you know it's worth it. You know, being able to make a a cable like this yourself for a few bucks compared to having to go out and buy one that might cost you. All right. Now one end of this is going to go to the positive of one battery into the negative 
of the other. That will join the two batteries together and they will act as if they were our one complete battery. At that point forward, I will never consider these batteries separate batteries anymore. They'll always be considered one 12 volt battery that has six 2 volt cells because each battery, each of these holes on top is a cell and each cell is just over 2 volts. So if you put all six of them together times 2, that's 12 volts. And a little bit extra is where you get your 12.6. It's actually your charge. Now the tops of these batteries have plastic covers on them. And there's a little tab that you can rip off because I'm only going to use the threaded post. I'm not going to use the uh, bolt-on post. And they come with stainless steel nuts to put stuff on. So we'll take the negative off one. Positive off the other. So right now, if I test this battery, I'm getting almost 6.3 volts. 6.3 volts and 6.3 volts, put those together, 12.6 volts, fully charged battery. Now if we add our patch cable, one to the negative, one to the positive, Actually, we're just going to set it on there for now. We then will test the negative of one battery and the positive of the other, and I get 12 point, wait, 12.56 volts, which is perfect. So with this cable across here, these two batteries become one battery. So that's done. That's ready now. We can put these into the boxes and get ready to mount them on the camper. Now let's talk about fusing for a minute. Now I'm just going to touch on this a little bit. This way you guys can leave comments below. And in the install video, when I put the fuses into the system, I can answer the questions that you have about fuses. What I have here is a small 40 amp fuse and holder. Now I got these at McMaster Car and then I have a larger one. You'll see the difference here in size. Okay this one here is going to go to my charge controller. This is going to be connected to six gauge wire, welding wire, that goes all the way to where my charge controller is. That'll protect the wiring all the way up to the charge controller but yet limit the wire to 40 amps which is all I really need going to my charge controller. Okay, and from the cell, solar power, solar power back. This is a hundred amp blade fuse. Now, what this one's going to go to is my inverter. Inverters convert DC power to AC power, and they draw a lot of amps. So you want the higher power, but you always want your fuses to be this, the correct size for your wiring. And that means your wiring in your whole system. The wire going to this is going to be four gauge wire. That's the wire going from the battery into this, four gauge going from the other post to the inverter. That is the maximum, I mean it's, the wiring can handle over 100 amps, but I know I will not need more than 100 amps. So I'm limiting it to 100, so I will never overheat the wiring going through. The fuse will break over, you know, will blow over a hundred amps and it will protect the wiring and the fuse will, is your sacrificial part. If there's ever a problem, the fuse will break, the whole system will stay intact. All I have to do is correct the problem and replace the fuse and I'm good to go. If my fuse was rated higher than the wiring, then and the fuse wouldn't blow because it's allowing that much amperage to do that. So this is where it, it keeps everything safe is your fuse. If you have an unfused system, you are not operating safely. Now there are other fuses in, the, in line with the system. There's a 40 amp relay fuse that goes to the power tongue jack, which I'll show you in the install. And there's another fuse, I think it's 30 amp, it could be 40 circuit breaker that goes to the camper. Those are already in place. I didn't need those. I just needed to fuse with the install to to upgrade the fuses going to the inverter 
and going to the solar controller. All right, well, let's get these boxes, these batteries into the battery boxes. Now, these battery boxes I had to purchase as well. They are 6 volt, you'll, they should say on there, 6 volt batteries. Okay, so you need to get, they're not the same boxes as you have for a 12 volt battery. They're taller. So make sure they fit, get the new boxes. The boxes are cheap, they're like 10, 12 bucks. They come with tie downs and everything that you need. The lids have these little tabs on them, that's how they vent. Always have your batteries in a battery box. It's very unsafe to transport and use batteries that are not contained or tied down to something. If they roll over, you know, in the back of the truck, arc, you can have a fire. Um, so you just want to make sure you, you take caution with your batteries. All right, let's get them in the boxes. We'll get one of the leads on. We'll get everything cleaned up. And then I can figure out the next step and get them installed into the camper. Again, guys, if you have any questions at all, leave the comments, and I will do my best to respond to them. If for some reason I can't respond to them or things are just so crazy that I miss it somehow, um, you have a good chance of one of my other viewers or somebody else that comes along will be able to answer that question for you. And then every other person down the line will have that information available to them as well. Um, and especially with fusing and wire size and things like that, it's very, 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 very important. Um, to do things safely and correctly in, in a situation like this. Now, I'm not saying this is exactly the way it should be done. I'm just saying this is how I do it and how I feel safe doing it. All right, guys, well, stay tuned for part three, the install. Uh, that should be the final part as well. Then after that, once we get to the boondocking site, I will do a video on maintenance and how to check water levels, electrolyte levels, um, and things like that. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and be safe traveling the tubes. Peace.